Now let's you and I dive into how an airplane's wings create the lift that makes flight possible. Now you're probably aware that an airplane's wing has a shape that has an upper curved surface and a flatter bottom surface. Well, this shape is an important part of what contributes to lift, but there's more to the story than just the shape. But first, let's start by talking about the air itself. Now, air is fascinating because it's invisible, yet it possesses the properties of a fluid. And it might help to think of air like water, because they're both actually fluids. With water, it's easier because you can see it and you can feel it. You can think of it as somewhat sticky because it has viscosity. Now, viscosity is the property of a fluid, like water or air, that makes the fluid resist flowing because it tends to stick to surfaces. And since air is a fluid, it also has viscosity and it sticks, like sticking to an airplane's wing. So why do fluids stick? Well, this is called the Coanda effect, which is the tendency of a fluid, like air or water, to stick and follow a surface due to its viscosity. Oil is a great example of a fluid that has high viscosity. It tends to stick and flow around objects. Now here's a neat demonstration of the Coanda effect in action. This demonstration is with water, but air works in the same way. The water's viscosity, that stickiness, is what's pulling the spoon. And now you probably also notice that the water here is also being deflected at an angle to the incoming stream. Now imagine if this were air flowing over a wing. You can see that the air would be redirected downward, setting the stage for lift. Now we're going to talk about this more in just a minute. But before we do that, let's talk about pressure and its effect on lift. Now you might be familiar that the wing shape makes the air flow faster over the top of the wing than under the bottom of the wing, and that creates a pressure gradient. And here's why. Daniel Bernoulli, a Swiss scientist, came up with this rather complicated formula and equation. Now we're not going to go into it in detail, but the important thing that you need to know is that it states if one part of the fluid's energy increases like speed, another part like pressure must decrease to keep the total energy the same. And for us pilots who aren't scientists, this simply means that the air above the wing forms a low pressure zone, while the slower air below the wing is at a higher pressure. And it's this pressure difference that produces an upward force that contributes to lift. And that's part of the story, but it still isn't the entire reason for lift. And here's something important to know. As a pilot, you can control this pressure gradient by changing the angle of attack. And you might remember that the angle of attack is the angle between the cord line of the wing and the relative wind. And as you change the angle of attack, you change that pressure gradient. Now there's a common myth that the air over the top of the wing and the air under the wing must somehow magically meet at the trailing edge at exactly the same time. And while this might help to explain how lift is generated, it simply is not always true. What's more accurate to say is that the air over the top almost always moves faster and reaches the trailing edge before the air below the wing. And while these pressure differences between the top and the bottom of the wing are important, you'll want to know that lift is more of a product of the angle of attack and air redirection. Now Bernoulli is an important guy, but it's this guy right here Sir Isaac Newton, who holds the key to understanding lift. And you might remember from your high school science class that Newton gave us the three laws of motion. And Newton's first law, applied to our discussion here, is that air would naturally move in a straight line due to inertia and could only be redirected if a force is applied. And just what creates that force? Well, it's the wing that exerts the aerodynamic force to bend that air downward. Remember viscosity? That creates something called downwash. 
Now next, Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. When the wing pushes air downward, which is the action, the air pushes the wing upward, which is the reaction. Now let's wrap this up by looking at an equation that calculates lift. Now don't panic, there's no test on this, but it's good for pilots to have a basic understanding of what it means. Now L is the amount of lift force that we're solving the equation for, and C sub L is for the coefficient of lift, which is the variable for the wing shape, the angle of attack, and other factors. And this little P looking thing right here, this symbol is rho, which is air density. And this represents how much mass is in a given volume of air. Now here's a pilot tip. Keep in mind that air density decreases at higher altitudes or with higher temperatures. Now V is for the speed of the airplane relative to the air. And A is the surface area of the wing. Now as a pilot, you can control the lift in this equation by altering the angle of attack, flying faster or slower, and by what temperatures and altitudes you fly at. Now for lift to work, air must flow smoothly over the wing. Now remember viscosity? However, if the angle of attack gets too steep, the airflow can break away, causing a stall and a loss of lift. Now don't worry, we're going to cover a lot more about angle of attack and stalling in other lessons. So what we've learned here is that lift is really a team effort. First, the Coanda effect assures that air sticks to the wing. Next, Bernoulli's principle shows us that there's a pressure difference in the faster air above the wing and with increased pressure below the wing. And finally, Newton's laws explain how the wing's downward push creates a reaction force responsible for the heavy lifting. And with everything working together, lift can even create the magic of making a behemoth like this fly.